Sorry, America, it's Hugh Hewitt. President-elect Biden has been certified the winner of the presidential election last night. President Trump accepted that in a tweet this morning uh, that was put out by Dan Scavino. Even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election, the president had Scavino type, and the facts bear me out. Nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. I have always said we would continue our fight to ensure that only legal votes were counted. While this represents the end of the greatest first term in presidential history, it's only the beginning of our fight to make America great again. I wish to uh, play for you Senate Majority Leader McConnell's statement on the floor of the Senate last night when, reassembling after rioters stormed the Congress, he laid down what I believe is the expectation of every American committed to the rule of law. We're debating a step that has never been taken in American history. Whether Congress should overrule the voters and overturn a presidential election. I've served 36 years in the Senate. This will be the most important vote I've ever cast. President Trump claims the election was stolen. The assertions range from specific local allegations to constitutional arguments to sweeping conspiracy theories. I supported the president's right to use the legal system. Dozens of lawsuits received hearings in courtrooms all across our country. But over and over, The courts rejected these claims, including all-star judges whom the president himself has nominated. That is the the leader before the riot, I'm sorry. After the riot, he took to the floor of the Senate, reassembled the Senate, and said the Senate of the United States and the Congress will not be intimidated by mobs. And they went forward, and early this morning, they certified over the objections of some representatives, which are perfectly legal uh, and expected, Uh, to various uh, state counts. Uh, Both houses have certified President-elect Biden's election. Uh, Lindsey Graham uh, spoke last night as well, cut number 11. Tim and I uh, have a a good relationship. I, I love Tim Scott. 1876, South Carolina, Louisiana, and Florida sent two slate of electors. They had two governments, by the way. And we didn't know what to do. Why did South Carolina, Florida, and Louisiana do it? To hold the country hostage to end Reconstruction. It worked. The commission was eight to seven. It didn't work. Nobody accepted it. The way it ended is when Hayes did a deal with these three states, you give me the electors, I'll kick the Union Army out. The rest is history. It led to Jim Crow. If you're looking for historical guidance, this is not the one to pick. Oh, right. But again, that's before the riot. After the riot, numerous members of Congress from both parties denounced in absolutely appropriate and unqualified terms the rioters as lawless thugs. Here is uh, Kevin McCarthy, the House leader on Fox News. This is Cut number eight. American. I condemn any of this violence that's happening in the Capitol right now. I could not be sadder or more disappointed with the way our country looks at this very moment. People are getting hurt. Anyone involved in this, if you're hearing me, hearing very loud and clear, this is not the American way. This is not protected by the First Amendment. This must stop now. In addition, Mike Gallagher, who was on this show yesterday, Congressman from Wisconsin, added this, cut number 10. Right now, I am sheltered in place in my office because we have protesters who have stormed the Capitol, clashing with Capitol Police, forcing their way into Statuary Hall. The vice president of the United States was just rushed off the floor of the House by Secret Service. This is Banana Republic crap that we're watching happen right now. I did an interesting thing 
the veterans of war, Mike Gallagher of Iraq, Michael Waltz of Iraq and Afghanistan, Tom Cotton of Iraq, condemned without exception everything done by the lawless rioters. Michael Waltz, who represents the uh, area around Jacksonville, down to Daytona Beach. Earlier today, I planned to object to some of the electors of states because I truly believe there were constitutional issues regarding states and courts challenging election laws shortly before Election Day. Objecting was supposed to serve as a forum to peacefully debate among my colleagues and raise these serious issues that deserve scrutiny. However, with today's despicable display of violence and intimidation on Capitol Hill, we must move on to ensure a peaceful transfer of power and certify the presidential election. We settle our political disputes through the debate and through law, not violent chaos. I've dedicated my life to serving our country in uniform. I fought to help others achieve the much desired peace and democracy we have been long accustomed to in America. The world is watching and we cannot allow our institutions to tear apart over procedural debate. Senator Tom Cotton, again, like Waltz, a combat veteran of the war, issued a statement. Last summer, as insurrection gripped the streets, I called to send the troops in if necessary to restore order. Today, insurrectionists occupied our capital. Fortunately, the Capitol Police and other law enforcement agencies restored order without the need for federal troops. But the principle remains the same. No quarter for insurrectionists. Those who attack the Capitol today should face the full extent of federal law. It's past time for the president to accept the results of the election, quit misleading the American people, repudiate mob violence. And the senators and representatives who fan the flames by encouraging the president and leading their supporters to believe that their objections could reverse the election results should withdraw those objections. In any event, the Congress will complete its constitutional responsibilities tonight. Uh, among Many of the uh, objectors did withdraw. Uh, Kelly Leffler, the defeated senator appointed in Georgia, withdrew hers. Michael Waltz withdrew his. Unfortunately, some did not. They went forward and were defeated, but they should have. And it is... Uh, it was a sad day. 1-800-520-1234. I would like to know your comments. 1-800-520-1234. I wrote for the Washington Post on deadline of an hour last night what, what follows. It's posted at WashingtonPost.com. Abraham Lincoln took office in 1861 as genuine war clouds loomed. A far, far worse situation than the storming of the Capitol by lawless rioters Wednesday. Lincoln arrived in the nation's city from Illinois by a roundabout route for fear of assassination along the way. He closed his first inauguration this way. We are not enemies, but friends, he said. We must not be enemies. Lincoln was not naive. He understood the deep divides in the still young United States, but implored everyone to step back from the brink of violence. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection, Lincoln said. The mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land will yet swell the chorus of the Union, when again touched, as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. Those moderating forces, which proved impossible to summon in Lincoln's days, have been largely missing from our country for four years. Since the shock of the election of President Trump, hyperpartisans have waged virtual campaigns against one another, and sometimes the virtual violence turned real. Often the police and other authorities have hung back and allowed looting and lawlessness to go unpunished. At other times, the police themselves have been the targets of attack, some physical and much verbal. When Trump supporters gathered in D.C. this week to, quote, stop the steal, it is hard to imagine that more than a tiny fraction intended violence. But some surely did, and they chose their moment with fierce intent. Congress had gathered to certify the election of President-elect Joe Biden in a ceremonial process that has been, in recent cycles on occasion, developed a counterpart ritual of objection and debate. But the objectors of 2004 and 2016 did not object on behalf of a contender so indifferent to the facts of vote counts, court decisions, and public opinion as President Trump. I do not believe the president intended today's riot. It has done him and his hopes for a future political comeback great damage. If he did not foresee what people in the outer fringes of his support were capable of, he ought to have seen it. As it unfolded, he ought to have been quick to condemn it. And he should have done so without any sort of mention of his own grievances. His subsequent evening tweet, since taken down by Twitter, bordered on the incomprehensible indifference to mayhem of the day and the death that is a consequence of that violence. He ought to be filled with remorse. Your calls after the break, one 800 